Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bold analysis. Two statements, one from Okia Omtata and the other one from James Orengo. These two statements have provoked Martha Kome and judiciary is coming out guns blazing against the Kenyan publics that are out criticizing the Supreme Court. Yesterday, when James Orengo was attending a burial in Mutumbu in Siaya, for the first time, he came out and criticized the judiciary, or rather the Supreme Court judges, on the language they used to deliver the judgment. And Orengo, did not miss his words in saying that those words were not, they were just politically instigated. Okia Omtata was also talking to, I think a journalist somewhere, he was attending an event, and the journalist wanted his comments on the language that Supreme Court judges used. And Okia Omtata was out saying that that language is a language that there is one judge one male judge who is fond of using that language remember okiam tata is not a new face in the courts because he's been doing a lot of public litigation on issues that are on public interest and of course he's one man that really interacted with the judges i wanted to listen to james orengo's statement that did not sit pretty comfortable with Martha Kome. I respect the court and I've practiced law for a long time. The judges in the Supreme Court, a lot of them are my juniors. They are my juniors in law. The judgment that they rendered, and I want to say this without fear or contradiction, was not a judicial judgment. The literature contained in that judgment was not judicial literature. That was a political track. It was meant to serve a purpose which has nothing to do with the law. The person who wrote that judgment has done a great injustice to the rule of law. Judges speak in words that are measured, that are tempered, so that even the loser in a court of law feels that justice has been done. It is like a good football match However much you like your team, but if the referee is fair and is not against you in any sh uh, shape or form, you congratulate those who are won in a football match. Football match has got rules, netball has rules, and the courts of law must work with judicial practice and render judgment in which the loser and the winner leave a courtroom saying that justice has been done. Not even a baraza presided by a chief would use the kind of language that we was used by the Supreme Court. Shame to you judges. Shame to you judges. We fought so hard. Raila Amolo Ninga was one of the people who fought so hard so that we have independent courts. When Raila was fighting for a, an independent judiciary to bring a new constitutional order, Raila did not just fight for devolution. He fought for independent courts. Now, that statement from um, James Orengo has provoked a reaction from Supreme Court who are saying 
that they just conducted their constitutional duty to uh, give a verdict on that case that was needed, but they're calling on the Kenyan publics to be patient and wait for the full judgment that will come the next 21 days as they promised. I think it is uh, probably next week. But this is the truth. And I wonder why they are even complaining. Someone should just accept that they subjected themselves to that ridicule by the choice of language. The judgment is final by Supreme Court and none of the parties and no one is contesting the verdict. However, they were oblivious of the fact that the losers were aggrieved. Um, you can dissent with the ruling, uh, you can dissent with the evidence, and yes, it is not wrong, and I want to agree. There is nothing wrong by the judges giving a verdict that upheld William Ruto's win. If anything, there were two options. There was upholding or nullifying. So Kenyans were actually expecting, expecting either of the outcome. But they also needed to have wisdom as whether it's there or lack of the same. That if there was going to be, because the verdict is upholding, Raila Odinga supporters would be aggrieved. So what does it take to simply just use no plain language, not emotionally annoying words? And as you can see, two weeks down the line, people have moved on. But the lawyers are taking an issue with the kind of language because what made Kenyans not to feel comfortable with that ruling was the language. It looked like one that was just used by bloggers. Now, it sounded like Raila even made a mistake to go to court. If Azmir had poor evidence and their work was to arbitrate and offer the verdict, it will just end at that point. For lack, if, yes, Raila lacked evidence, as they said, but is lack of an evidence a reason for you to just hit a person? Remember, I was even wondering when, when everyone else is sitting. They're giving a verdict as if there is another court that is going to listen to the case. And so they are simply saying, they were the last bit to speak on it. So, honestly, this is that. I want to um, say something that I've never said about these cases. That, of course, it was coming at a time that was very critical. Raila Dinga was in Azimula Omoja. The chair of Azimula Omoja had had long-term poor relationship with the judiciary. Remember the 41 judges that were supposed to be appointed and had not been appointed? The Supreme Court had also termed the BBA and Constitution. So there were just a lot of losses that had come from it. So this is something that was there. But then there is something I think um, why this response is now is coming and the objective of that response. The public outburst is denting the public trust of the courts. Kenyans are looking, there are Kenyans who are losing trust on the courts. And remember, there are other petitions. That was presidential petition that is coming. There are other petitions that are still in other courts. Governor, MP, Senator, County, all. There are other petitions that are on the way. And these, especially ones touching on governors, if there will be petitions that will overturn wins of some governors, what will that mean? What will, what will really play out? You'll actually see a probability that it will take political angles where someone will say this has been done because of political reasons. So this is a challenge and no one will then, it's not just about the judiciary or the Supreme Court, but now affect the other courts. They're attracting public sympathy from the other side. Of course, that will be it. But I think I'm, 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 as someone who is so much atten, attentive on words, and communication. This is a crisis that judiciary had found itself in. 
one of the best thing they can do is own up on the blunder and move away from the denial line. The more you deny and you seem to be giving scapegoats, Kenyans feel like it was deliberate. So you'd rather give words because the truth of the matter here is some of those words that were used in social in in in, uh, in that verdict were not even used by the lawyers. Even though we are waiting for the full verdict, piki piki pong pa Camilo disco was there, and uh, maybe someone need to paka that piki piki pong pa Camilo disco is just a word. Eh? It's just a phrase. Ya kuonyesha kwamba unacheza na huyu na unacheza na huyu. Yeah, just like something has happened and you just want to show double standard where picky pong pa camelo disco as in <laughs> i don't know i don't know how i can explain it someone explain it well in the comment section but it was not something offensive actually it's a word that ata watoto kiwambia they just relate with it and it's on a positive note so if someone was using that if someone was also going that direction because maybe some lawyers use such words uh, someone was arguing with me uh, in our informal uh, talks that that could also have led to that. But the truth of the matter here is those words were so harsh and annoying. At a time when you're giving a verdict and you know very well that the other side is not going to feel comfortable with it. Even if it were that there is nullification and you nullify with those harsh words, I, I am pretty sure that William Root of the president-elect side will not feel sit comfortable. With it, what people are contesting now are now expressing their uh, their feelings about is the choice of words. But then, we are waiting for the full verdict. Just drop those offensive words and annoying phrases like hot air and so forth in their full judgment. Just drop it. You know this, but I, but I think it's then better for the verdict to be given each judge aonge. So that Kenyans will really know whether an individual, because if the phrases of hot and so so will be used by one judge, the other judge mingine hata tumia na u mingine hata tumia. And even by consensus, if if you agreed that yes, it's unanimous, so the six judges are seated, we are deciding this is the words we're using. How does that come into? Honestly, so the standing in denial that something is not wrong, that 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 everything is right for me, it's a bad state. The crisis management team should work on how they just own up because totally by all due respect that was not a good language and what's your take on that that's my bold analysis